Welcome to Physics 2. I'm your instructor, Dr. John Goldman. If you have made it this far, you have found the orientation videos in the course overview, and so you have already done great things. Congratulations. So you've probably already looked at this Start Here dashboard as well and checked out my instructor introduction. Of course, there's the syllabi uh, folder, which we're going to be talking about shortly and you've made it into this course overview. Other things on this dashboard, the course objectives are going to be covered in the syllabus, so you probably can skip that for now. Uh, student and ins instructor expectations. My expectations of you is to conduct yourself at the highest level of integrity in this course. Communication policy, just treat others with respect in all your communication online. Uh, student resources, you may wish to check that out. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with Blackboard, you may wish to check out this student orientation. But most of the things you're going to be interested in now will be the syllabi, the course overview, and the content, because everything in this course is in this content button here. So you can probably uh, skip most of these um, uh, dashboard uh, flowchart items for now. Let's look at a few other things in this course overview. Of course, you've already uh, made it into the orientation videos. And if you check out my welcome page here, it says to look at those videos and also to check out the frequently asked questions because there's a lot of questions that people have when they're first taking this course. And most people have the same questions. One of the things is how can you buy the book for um, just a few bucks? and what do you do if the videos don't work for you and that sort of thing. So check those out. Um, you also definitely want to check out the technical setup folder in the content tab because there you can have uh, the um, information for all the setup of the major items in this course. For WebAssign, you need to get into WebAssign in order to access the ebook for this course. That's the only thing that we're going to be using WebAssign for. And so the technical setup will tell you how to get into WebAssign. Uh, the laboratories, you need to set up the latest version of Java and um, possibly download the latest version of Adobe Flash Player. So that folder will tell you how to do that. And there is a sample lab in there for you to test out your system. The quizzes, how to set up the quizzes and how to take the quizzes will be in the quizzes subfolder there. And you also want to look in there for the fun quiz, which you have to take during the first week of this course to establish your attendance. So look in the quizzes folder for that. And the exams, how to take the exams, where to go, what to do for the exams. So all that is a very important information in the technical setup folder of the content tab. You also wish to um, often check the discussions for uh, discussions within the class about uh, current topics in the class and of course the daily schedule. The daily schedule is a calendar for how you should conduct yourself in this course. Um, it's set up like a uh, two lecture a week course and so you would take a lecture on Tuesday and a lecture on Thursday at least that's suggested. But uh, what is really important on the daily schedule is your deadlines. So you can't miss those. The deadlines for the quizzes and the labs and the exams. You can work ahead on the schedule, but you can't work behind. So you can watch the lectures at any time you wish, 3 a.m. if you wish, but you must adhere to the deadlines of the daily schedule. So it's something you will check often. And then, of course, the content tab has everything you need in this course. So let's go back. Here's the frequently asked questions, so you want to check that out. We'll go back to the dashboard. And like I said, everything you need is in the content tab here. For now, we are going to discuss the syllabus. So we'll go in the syllabus tab and click on course syllabus for this course. Welcome to Physics 2, Physics 214. I'm your instructor, Dr. John Goldman. I reside in the Math, Science, and Administration building on the Decatur campus. If you go to the third floor of that building and go to the south end of that building, 
you have the natural science offices and I'm in room 370C of, of those offices. You can call me on my phone 306-2841 or send me an email john.gobin at calhoun.edu. I prefer that you contact me through the messages function of the Blackboard so I can keep a record of our conversation there. Uh, best time to see me is in the afternoons. Uh, just drop me a line that you might be stopping by just so I can let you know that I'm indeed going to be in my office at that time. This is Physics 2, Physics 214. Uh, the prerequisite for this course is Physics 213, which includes a prerequisite of Calculus 1 for that. This course provides a calculus-based study in classical physics. Topics included are simple harmonic motion, waves, sound, electrodynamics, AC and DC circuits, and magnetism. At the successful completion of this course, the student will be able to identify the basic principles and concepts of physics, apply physics concepts to the real world, apply techniques of problem solving, identify material to be used in future courses, and describe empiricism, the pursuit of knowledge through observation and experiment. Materials. We'll be using the ninth edition of Surway and Jewett Physics for Scientists and Engineers. Our bookstores sell the web assigned ebook bundle of this book. It has a loose leaf binder and an online electronic ebook version of the book. It is exactly the same as the hardcover of the book, but costs one third as much, so it's a great deal. You can also get the 8th edition or 7th edition or 6th edition of Sir Wayne Jewett online at Amazon.com for just a few bucks. And uh, that would be perfectly fine for this course because our problem sets are independent from the book itself. We have our own problem, problem sets that will be worked out and hence the uh, actual book won't necessarily matter. You also might want to purchase the uh, uh, binder that has my lecture notes and study questions available at either the Huntsville or Decatur bookstore. It costs about 24 or 25 bucks. That's a great deal as well. But uh, if you don't wish to go to the bookstore, you could download the same files as PDF files from the Blackboard shell. Uh, sometimes it's just nice to have it already printed out and bound for you. For your convenience. All the labs and lab materials will be provided online so there's nothing special that you need to purchase for that. You may wish to check out the library resources at this link here or the student resources at this link as well. Methods for this course. We will be looking at um, TechSmith Relay or Office Mix videos for our lectures and there's an optional YouTube version of the lectures in case the TechSmith Relay or Office Mix videos don't happen to work for you. We also have EduCreation or again optional YouTube video problem solving of examples. These are generally two to five minute videos of all the problems in the problem sets worked out by me on video step by step calculation by calculation right down to the input to the calculator. So these are great examples to look to see how to approach problem solving of these problems. We also have FET simulations for the laboratory exercises. These are great simulations that have been created by the University of Colorado Boulder with support from the National Science Foundation and they are um, very good simulations of the physics in a laboratory setting. Uh, we will use these for all of our online labs. There are other online resources for videos, notes, and problem solutions. Most of these are um, optional, but uh, they are great uh, things to look at and you might want to check those out. For the technical skills, Please refer to the technical setup folder on the Start Here homepage for information on how to do things like the quizzes. There's a quizzes subfolder there that has um, information how to do the quizzes and also a fun quiz that you need to take in the first uh, week of this course. 
There's also a, a subfolder for the um, exams, how to go about going to the testing centers for the exams and how to take the exams. And there's a subfolder for how to set up the labs and uh, how to set up Java and the FET simulations for the lab. So you want to check out the technical set technical setup folder on the Start Here homepage to do that. Grading, there are four exams that will consist of 75% of your final grade for this course. In the fall and spring semesters, that would be 18.75% per exam for those four exams. In the summer semester, there will only be three exams, so each exam would be 25% of your final grade. There are 12 weekly quizzes in the fall and spring semesters. And if you drop one, then that means each quiz is worth about 0.91% per quiz because it consists of 10% of your final grade. In the summer semester, there will only be 10 quizzes, so each quiz will be 1% of your final grade. The online laboratory will be seven labs consisting of 15% of your final grade in the spring and fall semesters. That is 2.14% per lab. Again, in the summer semester, that's only six labs, so it would be 2.5% per lab in the summer semester. My Grades and Blackboard will maintain a running percentage of all three of these components in the course grade at all times, allowing the student to see a current accounting of his or her standing in the course at any time that he or she wishes. The grade scale is the weighted percentage of your exams, quizzes, and labs. 75% exams, 10% quizzes, and 15% labs are all weighted into this final percentage. Uh, the percentage uh, scale is what you're used to. 90 to 100% is an A, 80 to 89% is a B, and so forth and so on. We have particular rubrics for the grading the exams will be 100 points per exam with an optional extra credit problem for plus 5 points. The first page of the exam will be a matching page. There will be 10 columns of matches, 2 points per match for 20 points. The second page will be 2 multiple choice problems. They are word problems, straightforward, uh, all or nothing, but the answers are there. Multiple choice problems for 20 points. And then there's the problem section, which will be six word problems, uh, probably two easy problems, two medium problems, and two hard problems, um, 10 points each, partial credit given. Now, the partial credit on the word problems is awarded based on the accuracy of the formulas used, the completeness of your approach, and the types of errors in the mathematical calculations. And demonstrating all these aspects Students must show all of their work to garner maximum partial credit. Generally, two hours will be given for the completion of an exam at one of the testing centers or by a proctor at a remote site. Exams will be graded by the instructor within a week following the due date of the exam. For fairness, the graded exams will not be returned to the student. Students may revisit the instructor during office hours to see their graded exam and or the student may request a summary of how their exam was graded. For the quizzes, the quizzes are patterned closely after the essential 10 problems for the chapters assigned that week. Each quiz is two problems, three problems in the summer semester, with each problem worth 10 points. The quizzes are 25 minutes long, 40 minutes in the summer semester. Answers are given as multiple choice selections, and the possibilities include uh, wrong answers, probably the most common type of wrong answer. So you want to be very careful with your um, solving of these quizzes. The quizzes are computer graded upon completion. The number of weekly quizzes is 12 during the spring and fall semester and 10 during the summer semester with the overall weight of each quiz being about 1%. The quiz solution will be posted within 24 hours after the quiz due date. There are no makeup quizzes under any circumstances, although the lowest quiz score will be dropped at the end of the semester. The main purpose of the weekly quiz is to ensure 
that the student is keeping pace with the current material in the course. Seven labs will be assigned in the semester, the due date shown on the daily schedule, so you wish to refer to the daily schedule often. There will be six labs in the summer semester. The labs will be graded on the completeness of the answers, the completeness and accuracy of the data, the overall writing ability of the student, including grammar and spelling, and the adherence to the essential features of a lab report, especially the items that must be contained in the conclusion. A guide to these essential features is included within each lab's Word template, so you want to look at the template and the guide inside there. Labs will be personally graded on a scale of 15 points by the instructor within a week following the due date. At that time, the lab score and the feedback will be prov provided to the student. Some labs will have opportunities for extra credit. Our topics in this course include simple harmonic motion, waves, sound, electrodynamics, DC circuits, electricity, magnetism, power generation, and AC circuits. The most important of all this would be the circuits study. Policies. Students are referred to the college syllabus, also in the syllabi folder, for institutional poli policies regarding attendance, withdrawal, disability services, student code of conduct, academic integrity, and complaint procedures. Attendance in this distance education course will be recorded within the first week of the course by the student completing the assessment fund quiz as found in the technical setup folder uh, with the quiz subfolder in there. After the first week, the student's attendance record will be based on the student meeting course requirements such as submitting assignments, completing labs, completing quizzes, or being involved in messages or discussions. These activities are monitored automatically. If a student does not meet attendance requirements as stated in the college syllabus, the student is encouraged to officially withdraw from the course. Late work. Each chapter is due to be completed by the deadline date outlined in the daily schedule. So you want to check that daily schedule often. It is your roadmap for the course. It helps link the assignments with the assessments. All work, lectures, labs, quizzes, and exams should be completed by the deadline dates, which is usually midnight on a Sunday. Quizzes. There are no makeup quizzes for the weekly quizzes. Since students are allowed to drop their lowest weekly quiz, there remains sufficient recourse for a student to rebound from an unexpected missed quiz. The overall value of each weekly quiz, which is generally about 1%, is also relatively small in the grand context of the course. Exams are labs. Students under extreme and tragic circumstances who have missed the deadline for an exam or lab should contact the instructor as soon as possible to outline a course of action for makeup. Communication. Our preferred communication in this physics course will be through the messages function within the course. When you log into the course, this tab will be near the top on the left-hand side. Files such as Adobe PDF or Pictures JPG can be attached and sent using messages. For topics of general interest to the course, students are encouraged to communicate through the discussions function within the course. This way all can benefit from the ensuing discussion. High discussion activity by the student will earn extra credit consideration. For all forms of communication within the course, the students are required to be respectful of others, especially with electronic communication, where students are devoid of visual aids and inflection in communication. It is essential to be mindful of the language that is used. Students should be aware of and be particularly sensitive to cultural differences. All written communication should use proper spelling and grammar. As mentioned above, this is part of the grading rubric for the laboratory and exam questions. The instructor can always be contacted via any email account to his Calhoun email address, john.goldman at calhoun.edu. Although messages is much preferred, all assignment submissions should be to messages. Final exam to be complete by the closing time at one of the testing centers on 
and check your daily schedule for this final exam date. Here's the daily schedule for this Physics 2 course. It says fall 2015, but this will be tailored to whatever semester you are in. And what is key on this daily schedule are the due dates. So the quizzes are due uh, at midnight on a Sunday, and so are the labs on particular Sundays at midnight. And you also want to check out the due dates for the exams, which are in blue. Uh, those will be the final day that you can take the exam at the testing centers. So you can always do this work early if you wish. Uh, quizzes, labs, exams. Exams will be available at the testing centers early. So you can always do it on an earlier date. You just can't do it on a later date than these due dates. So this daily schedule, which is your roadmap for the course, is especially uh, important for finding the due dates of things. Uh, it's a suggested roadmap as far as looking at the lectures. You can watch the lectures at any time you wish and do the work at any time you wish, just as long as you follow these due dates and do not miss those.